Welcome to the broadcast. I'm happy that you made it today. This is Pastor Elvis Newhart, and I'd love to share some insight and understanding out of God's Word today. So, let's see what He has for us. Come join us on our live broadcast every Thursday at 9 a.m. Central European Time on OmegaManRadio.com. And I hope to see you there. So relax and enjoy the broadcast. Yeah, and praise the Lord. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, Lord. We cover the entire broadcast with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. We bind up, we break, and we forbid all spirits, Father, in Jesus' name of transference, Lord. Lord, we just loose the fire of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, in Jesus' name, the hornets of the Lord to go before us, Father, and just put pressure and drive out the enemy in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be upon this program, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would give us a spirit of understanding, Father, in Jesus' name, so that we, we become hearers of the word and not just doers o- uh, only, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we bind up all spirits of fear, spirits of shame, Father, spirits of condemnation in Jesus' name, Lord, and we just loose the spirit of liberty in Christ to be on the people as we share today. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen, amen. I say amen to that. My friend, the mic is yours. Welcome back. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back, Shannon. Wow, one week to Thanksgiving. I tell you what, time is just racing by uh, here in the month of November. And praise the Lord. We've got a good full program for us today here. We're going to continue on with our uh, looking at the book Devil and Karen Kingston. It's been quite a few uh, programs before this here, like you, uh, for the complete story. Or a good place to start is right back at part one that explains why we're here and um, how we ended up with this young, uh, very young, I believe 13-year-old girl with all these spirits inside of her, uh, was witness to a hor- the horrible murder of her father by her mother uh, in her youth. Today, what would I want to start out with, it's uh, really important, we're going to look at this too. And I just want to say today, and for any of these other broadcasts that we have here too, if we're covering a topic and I'm talking about something and you're like, Ooh, I see that in my life, or ooh, I I can remember that. Or if a me- if a if a memory comes back, right? Number one, if it's if it's if it was if it's with a lot of guilt, shame, and condemnation, that's a demon, and it's right at that moment you say, "Yep, Lord, that was me. Lord, I confess that. I repent of that. Lord, can you heal and cleanse me, and then command that spirit to come out of you." And you can do it right there, right where you're at. Uh, A lot of you are by yourselves around the world in your own home. Maybe there's some folks around you, but you can just right where you're at, you just start telling these spirits to manifest and go and leave you in Jesus' mighty name. And it's really incredible what God's providence can do for you right where you're at. So praise the Lord. So, hey, so I tell you what, let's go forward. Let's get a lot of deliverance today and through the next week, and we'll have a lot to be thankful for uh, next week. Uh, Thanksgiving is not a national holiday in Germany, uh, but those of us here, uh, we still act, like to act like turkeys during this time and uh, to celebrate it. So, really good. And uh, Shannon, I hope in a week or so that uh, you and that beautiful family of yours, you can go find somewhere to uh, celebrate Thanksgiving right where you're at. Thank you. Is that we're a gonna, possibility? Uh, Go ahead. We're going to try to um, hold Thanksgiving here at the house. I'm not sure yet what kind of bird we're going to eat. If we're going to find a real turkey, but um, you know, a tried and true alternative is uh, rotisserie chicken. You can pick up at the supermarket. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No cooking yes. involved, and it tastes just as good. Or you can always go oh. with duck. So we may go that route, but. Um, you know, then there's always the option. You could always go to a sports bar where they uh, usually cater to expats. But you know what? Thanksgiving right. is, will probably be held right here at the house. So um, I'm looking forward to it and inviting some local people around to, you know, share the uh, share the holiday with them and so uh, and feed them. And so uh, I think that's what we'll be doing. <laughs> 
Well, praise the Lord. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We get super creative here. Um, exact same thing going on over here. Uh, they have some places that are quasi-American. There are some that make a real good uh, Thanksgiving feast. Uh, it's always interesting, Shannon, to see too what people consider as Thanksgiving, right? Amen. We're back, everybody. Hold on a second. Let me get Pastor Elvis back on. Pastor Hello Elvis, there, Shannon. Welcome back, there. I'm sorry for that interruption. Hi. Our internet stopped, yeah, so I just, what I did is, I don't know, uh, it may have been at my end, I went ahead and just to be sure I unplugged um, a cable box. So anything I can do to boost our bandwidth, I just did. So I think we'll be all right now. Well, excellent. That's great. Uh, I, uh, just to let you know, I could always hear you from this side. Okay. There was no connect. There was no breaking up of connection or anything, so... Uh, I didn't have any problems hearing you or whatnot, so it's always good to know that. I I have to go through that procedure, too, sometimes to uh, make things work. We also bind up all dem demonic interference with this communication here, too, because we are going to be going over some big topics today. And uh, so praise the Lord. And it's good. We, we need to be cutting corn. Uh, but just to fi uh, finish up our Thanksgiving uh, uh, extravaganza that we're doing here. Uh, I don't believe uh, we're not going to be broadcasting next week, are we, Shannon? That's right. We'll have next week off, next week's show, but then we'll resume the uh, the week following. That's, that's right. All, we'll that's all right to, with you. We'll 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 need to be we'll need to be uh, uh, recovering from all that tryptophan, right? All that turkey we ate. That's right. <laughs> you know, that would be a great time for us to preach on the spirit of gluttony, right, bro? <laughs> Well, that's true. There are some that uh, do indulge a little bit too much. Right. So we lose the spirit of meekness, temperance, and self-control on us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, everybody. I tell you what, we're going to go forward, and like we said today, what we're going to do is we also just break off guilt, shame, condemnation. We also break off all backlash from the, uh, 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 from the message, and we also pray for the minds of the believers in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And so we pray that. But I want to get right into this here. Uh, we've been doing a series on the devil and Karen Kingston. It's a book that I have, one that was published in 1976. Several people had that. Um, I believe I ended up getting this book at Hegwish a long time ago. Let me see. Yeah. And uh, wow. So but anyway, um, I believe people were looking for the book, Shannon. They were finding it for what? Up to 260 British pounds over in England. Right. Um we found it for $200, $250 over in America. Other people really dug around. There's another version of it that's also really pretty good. Uh, it's like something Chapter 4 or Chronicles of Evil or something that, that the author did. So I want you folks to go ahead and just check that out. It's out there. Uh, some people were actually able to secure the book for, I believe, around 20 euros. So if you'd like that, um, I'm not here. I cannot read. Sadly, I can't sit here and read the whole book to you. Wouldn't that be fun, Shannon? I could just read. I could get on here and just read books to people, and maybe they would still show up. But we're going to cover a lot of ground tonight in Jesus' name. So I pray, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me today, Lord. I pray that you would just speak healing and deliverance to your people, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. And we do, Lord. We pray over all the communication now in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Well, here we are now, and uh, we're talking about uh, Pastor Roberts, and there was a group of, there were 10 people, I believe we're down to 10. One person was injured, uh, another, maybe another person ran away, and we're talking about uh, the young girl by the name of Karen Kingston, and what happened was, uh, this is, and this went on uh, during the month of April in 1974. And earlier than that, when Karen Kingston was seven years old, um, she, had a, she had an alcoholic father, and she had a mother, and I'll say this respectively, she had a mother that was also full of ill repute, and it was a really difficult, uh, you know, one of those uh, uber-alcoholic marriages with a, you know, it was a sloppy drunk on one side, and you had a very loose mother, And one of the things that they asked, and this is where we're going to start today, we're going to talk about, we're going to start off talking about the seventh layer of demons that they came up against called the spirit of mockery. And this is real big because mockery, you, 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 you know, it's like, wow, here we are, we're on layer number seven of this onion right now. And uh, 
and you know it, it's just working through now so and you know we there's been lots of names that we've uh, um, talked about along the way I think a lot of the names sometimes are just names of the people that have that they've been in before the demons can always lie they'll use their they'll use the Greek name they'll use a Roman name they'll use a something other name and uh, and then there's names where uh, we notice here where they use just names probably probably from the last people they've been in but uh, in mockery here they asked again and um when they were pressing the demon for the name the de the demon called it called itself a, a, a spirit of mockery and they kept interrogating the spirit there and they asked they asked where how the demon gain access into the person and this is a real deliverance principle from all the way back then they were asking how long have you been in this child and the spirit responded since the beginning and they go the beginning the beginning of what and this is where we we're gonna see a real thing on transference of spirits and this and this this demon responds says is like well back when she was only seven years old gloated the demon right well you know that her father was a sloppy old drunk don't you you do know that she w that he was stabbed to death, stabbed to death, don't you? You do know that her mother was a whore, don't you? Right? Well, what better time could there be? I mean, the child had no defenses. Now, I've smoke, spoken about this before, but, you know, seven-year-old child having to witness that, and it's like they have no defenses. And this is why it's even important today with young kids or children or whatever, we need to be, we need to pray over them. And we also need to be a bit watchful of, of what kids are exposed to. And you see, the, the demons have come back around and says, well, we don't want to stunt their development. We don't want to bruise their inner child. Well, forget all that. We're not opening doors for demons. We're not opening our kids. We're not opening the kids to anything in Jesus' mighty name. And that's also good advice for us, right? And so what happened was, it says, you know, the child had no defenses, and she went into shock. And there can be times of shock and trauma or injury, you know, shock or trauma. And this is also a good time for demons to transfer. And it says, it was really quite easy for myself and the other demons to enter. We just came out of, out of her father first when he died. Then we kept the door open for the others in her mother, right? After all, the broad was no longer of any use to us since she was going to be locked up behind bars. And this is why prison ministries a lot of times uh, find so much success in what they do, okay? Because, you know, a, a lot of those people that are behind bars, especially for life or, you know, stuff like that, the demons go, uh, I'm not going to sit in this boring prison and just be with here. I I'm going to let the spirit, the prison spirits can come into you, but I want to go out and have my fun. And actually, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of Christians that, are, that became Christians while they were in prison, right? And it's because, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those demons up and leave. So, but I've spoken about this uh, before and how that goes and how there's like some, some prisoners in there for really horrific crimes. They go, you know what, I don't even remember the crime anymore. Uh, I just saw a person, I blacked out, and then I woke up and I was in the police station in handcuffs. So we'll get more to that, more to that later. But, you know, when the spirits leave... And I'll just throw this on here, too, because we may have unsaved relatives, unsaved loved ones, or unsaved people that we know. Bind up the spirits that are blocking their salvation. And I believe in another program, I spoke on this earlier, uh, we've had this before, where we had a massive deliverance thing, where we had a man. Uh, there was a man that just came to a deliverance meeting, and he was just there to pick up his wife. And by complete accident, we ended up, he ended up sitting next to me. And on the other side was another big guy that I knew, and we were just there enjoying the message. And then del deliverance broke out, and he was the one that manifested, right? He was the one that manifested, and by himself, during this time of manifestation, ended up grabbing both of us around our, way, uh, around our waist and jumping over the table. We ju he, he jumped up and took two of us over a table and down on the floor. And so we kept praying, and they ran up to us going, oh, you can't pray for him, you can't pray for him, he's not saved. And we were like, uh, okay, we have a demon trying to kill us now, what are we going to do? And so we started praying against the spirits that were blocking this man's salvation. Long story short, the spirit left, and I tell you, as soon as that spirit left, 
uh, the man on the floor was asking us, you know, what do I need to do to be saved? And we led him to Christ right there on the floor. Now, that was a rare occasion for that, but Jesus knows how to get him. It's an incredible story with that. If Jesus, Jesus knew how to, how to deliver and get this guy saved, and it's another miracle and a picture of God's love that God could find Karen Kingston basically in the cellar of a mental hospital and bring it to this point. So, well, but anyway, but here was the spirit of mockery. And so they found out, and they found out how the spirits came in, right? And they found out how the spirits came in. And what happened was, it was announced it was, was mockery. And as they're praying for this little Karen, one thing she did is she, she, her body went into the form of a crucifix and then levitated and raised by itself into the air. Okay? Now, there are many churches and many religions or whatever that would call this an act of God, and they'd have 10,000 people in the congregation come watch the floating girl, and oh, look, the cute little girl floating in, floating in the air like the crucifix, crucifix of Jesus. No, you see this here, that this is a demon doing this, and, what ha- and it was a spirit of mockery. And I'm going to go more into this a little bit. But well, another spirit that needs to be rebuked out of churches is the spirit of mockery, okay? Because a lot of this doesn't go on outside. You don't see this in the shopping mall all the time, but where you'll see a lot of this stuff is in a lot of the churches today, right? It's called lying signs and wonders, okay? And you know what? People fall in, into agreement with it because they tend to draw crowds. So more on that. So what happened was was... You know, so here she is levitating. She's up like that. And, you know, it was a mockery of Jesus, a mockery of the cross. It was a mockery of the blood of Christ, right? Okay. And so anyway, but, but what happened was, was the, 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 the deliverance pastor rebuked the spirit. And he said, you know what? You're not going rebu- to mock that. And those out there and pastors out there and church leaders, group leaders, heck, even Christians, you know that you come up against a lot of mockery wherever you go. If you haven't experienced this, this, this thing on, just go put on that t-shirt with the big old golden cross on the front that says, I love Jesus. Put that on and walk through the shopping mall, right? Especially today, especially in America, right? And there's a lot of mockery because a lot of people will run away and quit and everything just because of some mockery. So they rebuked that spirit and guess what? And, and guess what? All of a sudden the levitation stopped. Right, and so they kept praying to go cast the spirit out. And the next thing that manifested was, is they're praying, for, they're praying for her, right? And and then uh, and then the spirit of mockery came up again. And it says that she, that Karen Kingston was in a state of extreme torment. She crawled all over the room, barking like a dog, sniffing everyone's shoes, then licking. Okay, now. We've seen this again, and now I want to repeat again and again. This is a spirit of mockery, right? And what happened was, you know, she crawled over the room and barked like a dog. Now, I want to point this out. This book came out in 1976. This this recorded, audio recorded, video recorded deliverance session here happened in 1974, now, why this is big is because there was a move that went through the American churches, and there still is, well, just the worldwide churches. And I want to tell you folks, too, notice that, that a lot of this craziness will start in the United States, and then it will spread like fire. It will come over into Europe. It will get into Asia. It will get into Africa and uh, South America, you know, Central America. It just spreads like weeds, right? And so what happened was, and you can go on, on YouTube now, or we were watching all this, right? Um, You can go and you can research the Kundalini spirit, right? But another thing that was going on is they would tell people, um, they would they would tell people that um, you know they would they would have people crawling around the floor of their church barking like a dog, and they were barking in the spirit, and this is the Holy Spirit. Man, I, I would watch that stuff, and I would just I would rebuke it from where I was in Jesus' name, because look at here too. You know, having read this, having read this almost hidden book, you realize it's like it's like that's not the Holy Spirit, that's a spirit of mockery crawling around the floor, getting people, getting Christians to crawl around the floor like that, do all this other crazy stuff, and bark like a dog. It goes even further back. I've read I've read so much on revivals and. And also over in England where they had this too, there was another man 
he was standing and, and preaching. I believe it was Jonathan, um, was it Jonathan Edwards? Uh, the man, okay, let's go forward. But he's standing there preaching. Uh, he's standing there preaching, right? And all of a sudden, this lady starts roaring, just starts flopping around and roaring. And he asked her, and he looks down, and he goes, what, pray tell, is that down there? And she goes, oh, I'm the Lion of Judah. I'm the Lion of Judah and the Spirit of God. And he looked right down at her and says, no, you're not, and had, had the men carry her away so they could pray for her. Okay? Now, one thing, I real short here, too. This is, uh, I've, I've preached many longer message, messages on this. This will be, be a mention. There are so many people that come into deliverance, and they want to do the right thing. Okay? And each and every one of you that's come into deliverance, and it's doing, you, you want to go in. You want to do the right thing. You want to get free. And what happens is, like, this spirit just seems to, to sniff people out like this. And like, well, you got to do this. You got to follow this rule. You got to do this. You got to do that, or you're not going to get any deliverance. And I just want to repeat that the deliverance is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of His shed blood only. Okay. And also, what I want to do is I want to refer you back to your Bibles, and this is why we need to read God's Word, because it's like, you know what? I don't remember, see Jesus having anybody crawl around and bark like a dog on the ground, right? But they always cover that, don't they? They say, well, it, it, it's the latter rain. It's the fresh anointing. And I want to repeat what was said to me by one of these people here, one, one of these snake oil salesmen that called himself a pastor trying to, uh, trying to do this. He, he, he's like, well, you know, you shouldn't concentrate so much on the Bible you know, and be so fundamental. We, we, we need to have revelation knowledge and everything right through your dark co coffee filter. No, thank you. Okay, and I have a heart for that because what happens is, is people walk in going, oh, you know what? I heard this Omega Man one time. They were talking about deliverance. Hallelujah, we found a deliverance church. We found a deliverance church and everything. And uh, yeah, let's go try this out. And they walk in and all of a sudden the people got them doing all this crazy stuff, barking like a dog, whatever else like this, crossing the legs. You know, they bring them into this and the people go, you know what? This is just a little bit too weird. Forget this stuff. And that's the point. And that's what the spirit of mockery does. It gets people, it, it turns people away, away from deliverance, right? Now, I also, I also want to put this out here too for pastors or deliverance workers and whatnot. And uh, that's a good spirit to, to also come against uh, in your church too is the spirit of mockery. Because that, um, you know, that spirit of mockery, because there's so many people that are hooked on false signs and wonders, Okay, or that spirit will start talking to the people in in the congregation about the pastor. Okay, and what it does is it just comes up with mockery. In Germany, we call it Spott, Hoon, everything else like this, and that spirit will be going on, and it's just it it's like cancer in, in the middle of a church. So we rebuke that now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here they are with the spirit of mockery, and of course they came that again. Uh, it's really interesting. They started praying. They started binding up and casting out that spirit of mockery that was manifesting in Karen Kingston. And guess what? It reacted to prayer, and they could cast it out. So, yeah, praise the Lord. There's a lot of things out there, folks, that are sold as the Holy Spirit. Okay, that are sold as the Holy Spirit, and they are not. It is a spirit of mockery. Okay. There's another one I'll put out there, too. There was a book that went all around the world, and there was a lady, and she was sitting in a chair, and she bounced up and up and down in the chair and made weird noises and practically became unconscious, and her eyes rolled back up in her head, and she, and, she, and it was this. She goes, oh, well, do not be afraid. That is the Holy Spirit. And I looked at it and said, and I, I shared it with the people in the church, too, and I said, you know what? That looks a lot like what goes on in a deliverance workshop when somebody prays for you. Okay? So, praise the Lord. Anyway, I just, yeah. And, and people, the reason why I bring this up is then at least somebody said it because it, it has gone worse time ago. And there was a world And it deceives Christians. Okay, to make them look like idiots and to mock them. But now notice this. The first spirit that came up in this passage today is a spirit of mockery 
And now I want you to notice what comes up right after this too. They go on to the eighth. I call it the eighth layer in the in the oven uh, in the onion, right? And the name of this spirit, or what the spirit wanted to call itself, was Mariana. Okay. And it took a little bit, and they prayed. But as soon as they cast out mockery, which means mockery, mockery was blocking and shielding this 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 demon here, right? Okay, uh, the spirit of Mariana showed up, right? And so here they are, and so they're they're interrogating they're interrogating this demon that was called Mariana, right? At first, Mariana tried to be nice. Mariana tries to cut a deal with them and everything, and then all of a sudden, out of the body of this uh, crinkled up little girl, out of this little girl, all, you know, you know, could, didn't really communicate, but the demons kept communicating all the time, right? All of a sudden, <clears throat> okay, the voice, uh, the, you know, the voice changes, right? And and Pastor Rogers said, you know what? Why don't you tell me your name? And all of a sudden, out of this little girl comes. If you will kiss me, I'll tell you everything you want to know in one of those voices, right? Okay? And so, so anyway, it says, if you will kiss me, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Okay? And Karen's lips puckered as she looked up. I'll even go away and never bother you again. I'll leave this girl. Kiss me, please. All I want to do is to feel your lips on mine. Well, geez, isn't that what every guy wants to hear, right? Right? You know, and you but but now I, I want you to notice here, you had this spirit and, and we're getting down, down, down into the bigger bigger ones here, and notice this spirit, notice this spirit of lust here, okay? And I want uh, and this is not written in the book here, but I want you to notice here what was going on is this spirit wanted to transfer to him. Okay? Now I could preach for another hour on fake religious te teaching where they say, we, if you hold a boy's hand, you're going to get pregnant. Oh, if you kiss boys, you're going to get pregnant. That's a whole other thing, but it, it comes under this spirit too, right, where they get everybody so uh, shocked and shamed of holding hands or kissing a boy, right, holding a hand or, kiss, or, or kissing a boy. But now in this case right here, what you had is you had this spirit Mariana, right? If you kiss me, I'll tell you everything you want to know. You know what? You go to the book in Proverbs when they speak of the adulterous woman or they speak of the strange woman, you'll find out that the same tone that's being used. And this same tone is being used. This same tone is being used uh, to come against, uh, uh, you know, men and women of God. So, you know, men and women of God and everything else like that. And boy, we'll, we'll just keep going. Wow. OK, now, the other thing is, is that would be kind of sick when you had an 11 year old manifesting girl, 13 year old manifesting girl. Yeah. And it's like, well, kiss me and I'll tell you everything you want to know. OK, that's red alert time. Now, usually when you're praying against a spirit like this, and I'll add this in here, too. And when spirits go like that, like this, um, cover everybody's mind with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is a very powerful spirit, and it wants to reach into the head and all the glands of everybody around there, right? Or if you're praying for somebody, and all of a sudden, it's like lustful thoughts start racing through your mind, or crazy thoughts start, start going through your mind, right? Okay, start rebuking the spirit of witchcraft, okay? Witchcraft, witchcraft lust. Okay? Because they'll try to get you with this. And another thing that the demons like to do on the floor, too... Another thing that the demons like to do on the deliverance floor, too, is to get you distracted, get you ashamed. And it's like, you know, you have to get the attitude. It's like, no matter what happens in front of me, the goal is, is get this demon out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, demon, you're a liar. I don't believe two words out of your, uh, out of your mouth. You can, you can talk about Shannon and all the things you're going to lie about him all day. I don't believe it. We want you out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Okay. And you see, the other thing was, was, you know, I, I like how Pastor Rogers here, too, says, you know what, I don't make bargains with demons, especially kissing a demon. Yuck. Yuck. Right? I make no bargains with Satan soldiers, but you do have to obey me. Last night when we were talking, uh, last night when we, we had prayer meeting and everything, one of the things is, is we were praying and talking about was binding, binding the spirits to your authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are running the show. The demon is not running the show, no matter what they want to tell you. Right? Okay. 
So, here it is. The spirit, so he rebukes her, spirit talks back to him. Now, I'm reading this directly here because you can't make this up. It says, kiss me, you fool, kiss me. You'll love the feeling. Again, Karen pushed her lips out. She ran her tongue across them sensuously. Put your lips on mine, you rascal. I'll give you the thrill of your life. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I bet you would be a thrill of life. Seriously, again, what was trying to happen here is this spirit, it loves to transfer this spirit wanted wanted to hop from this possessed person over to over to the pastor. Okay, we're going to get into that more, right? And so now notice this here too, because this spirit also employed mockery. Okay, they just cast out the spirit of mockery to be there, but you see that's what what this does, right? And what they're doing is they kept interrogating the demon. Okay. And the demon and the demon says, "Well, my name is Mariana, none other than Mariana." Now, like I said again, whether this was the real name of the demon, whether this was the name of the person who had the demon last, right? Okay, they can give you give you whatever ever name, right? And it says, "Hey, it says uh, it, it goes on and the it says, I am Mariana." Okay, I act like a female dog. Am I? I am the female dog in heat. Right, right. I am Mariana, right? Okay. And now what's and um, it goes on, and then it starts talking about all of its escapades. And now, like I said again, it's a very strong, a very powerful spirit, right? And what it wanted to do was was really to shock the wor- or the workers, and they'll even tell the truth sometimes uh, uh, if it, if it helps them. Now, so here we go. Now we're going to get into things here too, and I'm going to say this too. We just find up all shame guilt, condemnation, because even religion, religion loves to cloud these things in shame and guilt and condemnation, and it blocks freedom. And I've got to talk about this because, you know, there's so many, you know, there's so many, you know, I'll say little old church ladies or whatever else like that, they get out there and, you know, hey, they may go live this wild life and everything, and then their mission in life is to go warn everybody. Oh, don't look at boys. Oh, don't hold hands. Uh, No... Don't, uh, uh, don't, uh, you know, don't kiss the boy. You'll get pregnant. And you know what? I think there's been a lot of counsel, and I think there's been a, a lot of wrong counsel and shameful counsel brought into into the churches and everything. And then what do you have? You have women that are that are afraid to death of men, right? You have men that are afraid to death of women. And what you what what that does is that produces a lot of. Uh, hatred and fear for men and women, and you know what? And you know what the definition of hatred of men and hatred of women is? That's the spirit of lust, people. Okay, let's talk about this. This is interesting. It's like looking way back. Mariana continued. It says, "I am a maniac. I am an adulteress." I'm the one who controls sexual things. I need sex. I want to make it with everybody in this room. Why, I can even make this child masturbate at will. Okay? Now, usually when people come into deliverance churches, some of the first things that they receive prayer on are, I'm going to say it this way, sexual issues. Okay? Fornication. Okay? I I need to teach about all this again, too. Right? Because You know, fornication. Uh, adultery, um, you know, they get to that eventually, okay? And one of the things, and a lot of men, they come in and they get prayer on, is also the spirit of masturbation, okay? Masturbation. Now, the thing is this, is I want to look at the, it's, it's a spirit of unbridled lust and adultery and whoredoms and harlotry. And I want to say it this way here, too. This is an area, you know, it's all shame, shame, whatever, not talked about, Not talked about too much in the churches, and that's where it flourishes in the churches. Okay? So what happens is, what goes on is, now notice this spirit here too. It says, I can even make this child masturbate at will. Now what we're talking about is is it goes on, and what happens is, is is that when it's to a point to where it really affects the day, it's not about you doing it. It's about what is it doing to you? What is it doing to you? Is it compulsory? Are you forced? Is there something that comes up where the life and the universe stop unless you unless you do that, right? 
it, is it really uncontrolled? It gets really demonic. Okay, it gets to the point to where people have hurt themselves, but they keep doing it and they keep hurting themselves because this spirit goes and do, and and does this. Okay, so we're not even talking about you know a little masturbation here, a little bit masturbation there. It is like it, it's a compulsion, compulsion. Sorry, I got the German word bouncing around my head. I'm swung. Okay. And so what happens is, is that um, it comes in. And uh, and so we have this spirit here. Each one of these, again, is an entire message on harlotry, whoredoms, whoredoms in the church, right? Uh, whoredoms in the church and the spirits of unbridled or uncontrollable lust. Okay, and when it gets to this point here, it, it, it has nothing to do about sex, and when it's really demonic, we have prayed for so many people, uh, you know, where we've prayed for them and we've come against, you know, we've come against different spirits, and then all of a sudden there's like this uncontrollable thing, and it will sometimes start to happen while we're praying. Now remember, no shame, guilt, condemnation, or prayer. We just want to get the spirit out when when that happens. And it's very tormenting for people, and it's very it's very uh, shameful to bring that up. As a matter of fact, there's a, a lot of places where you can only admit that or get prayer on that is in deliverance churches, because in other churches you don't want to be the one known as da 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 da. How can I prove that? Well, we go on just a little bit in in, in the account here, right? And what happens is is the is the Baptist evangelist minister jumps up and says, "Stop that disgusting talk." I order you, speak not of such filth in our presence. I will not stand for any more. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Forgive me, I'm going to quote a demon on how, how the demon responded, how the demon responded uh, to the Baptist evangelist. Okay. Because he didn't want that. See, again, that spirit. Oh, you shouldn't talk about it. Hide it. Oh, that's so shameful. Uh, get rid of it. It'll, it'll be less sh shameful, right? Um, Mariana responded uh, with a word that starts with the letter F, and the second word starts with a Y. He basically said, you know, just like the English would say, bugger off, right? Basically said, basically said, F you, you Baptist mofo. Yeah. Notice how n notice how the, you know, the demon didn't even respect. The demon didn't even respect what they said about that. He, I'm going to manifest anyway. Right? Now the rest of the paragraph is the demon responding to the Baptist evangelist and we don't need to repeat the words that were said there. Right. It was basically F you. I don't respect you. There you go. Right? And so, and the other thing was this here, too, is then all the scientists and all the other religious people in the room, oh, they had to be, they wouldn't even use the word bad language or use the words like that. They had to use another word. And they go, oh, have you ever heard her swear like that before? Or what, you know? And it's like, finally, someone had to turn around and say, it says, it's just filthy talk. It's just a demon. Get over it. Folks, when you lock horns with the enemy and when you start coming, coming after the enemy, you're going to hear things, you're going to see things, and you don't care because the focus is we want this person free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this person that I'm praying for in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. I love this person. I want them free because you know what? Then it's that person that gets to get up and pray for you. Their, their folks, is your love for one another. Yeah, and they'll know that there are Christians by their love. Yeah, that's love. That's love when you have uh, like that coming out of people and you can still call it out and not sit there and go, oh, shush, 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 shush. So right now in Jesus' name, and like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, without shame, guilt, or condemnation, for any of our listeners right now here too, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Father, we unravel the chains of us, Lord, any adultery in the family line, any of the fornication, and fornication meaning... If we or anybody else that we've known, but let's just keep it with us, if we've played the man whore, if we've played the whore, if we've had a stained past, praise the Lord. You know what? If Jesus can, when Jesus showed up, if Jesus could come and make the, those prostitutes clean, and those prostitutes, remember the prostitutes in the Bible, and they loved Jesus, and they washed his feet, and they put the oil over his head, 
I'm going to show you why they did that as we keep going forward. Because when you get delivered from that spirit, there's a love of Christ there. These are very tormenting spirits, and we rebuke them in Jesus' name, and we command them to come off the people in Jesus' name. Lord, we also bind up and cast out all spirits of, of um, long-time, uncontrolled masturbation in Jesus' name, Lord. Masturbating till it hurts, unconscious ma- masturbation, every form, but but really the, the, this demonic masturbation that torments men, torments women in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we rebuke the spirit, Lord. We rebuke the spirit of mockery. We rebuke the spirit of Mariana now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep, cleanse these people, Father, with the cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we take authority over that in Jesus' name. And you, and Mariana, you and your, your little potty mouth spirit can go right out the door now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, what happened was, when this, when this spirit, the spirit Mariana, when they start talking like that, hey, how does a demon talk? They use demon language. Grow up, people. Oh, my God. Can my Christian ears hear such words? Yeah, they better be able to, especially when we're praying for people. You know why? Because what happened, and what happened even to the people in the room, they were so red-faced and they were so embarrassed. Right. Right. Okay. It is. What's a demon? A demon is ungodly filth, people. Okay? You know, the garbage man wakes up in the morning and he knows what he's going to have to deal with. And he puts on his uniform, right? It's not the armor of God, but garbage man puts on his garbage man outfit and he goes from place to place. And can you imagine what the garbage man has to see every day? Right? So, praise the Lord. Now, and it was really interesting here, too, because there was just a, not a lot of respect here showed. And this was to the evangelistic Baptist, who was still, you know, it, it's something. They sing, they praise the Lord, nothing against them, not questioning their salvation or anything else like that. But the enemy knows who does and who does not believe in deliverance or true spiritual warfare, right? Right? And really, it's like the spirit was raging out of control. And so what it was doing, though, it was really, it was breaking these men down. And it was using every word that would never be spoken in that spotless Baptist church, Baptist revival tent of his. And then what happened, the spirit turned its attention on the Catholic priest. Right. And it started doing that, okay? So Rogers took over again, but we'll go here. And it says, you know what? And it says, and now, now I want you to know this. I want you to, I want you to notice this here too. So it's like this. Mariana gave this. Uh, the, the Mariana gave this thing of, of like being oh the sensuous, overly sexualized spirit, right? Okay. But now I want I want you to look at this, right? It says, it says, I hate. The spirit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote the spirit here. Mariana erupted. I hate goddamn women. Yep, it says I hate I hate women. Right? You say you have strength. You say you are strong in your faith. You say you can perform miracles through your God. Well, take a look at this. Uh, see what I can do. Uh, see what I can do with this. Okay. A spirit of a spirit of lust like this is a spirit of hatred of women or hatred of men. Okay? This manifests this manifests, you know, it's not that they're so you, you hear all this Don Juan and Don Carlo and oh all the all these great love or women. That is just hatred of women. Okay? And degrading of men and degrading of women. Right? Now, Mariana, this spirit here, too, says, oh, you think you're really tough? You think you're really something? Well, look what I can do. And what, they did, what the demon did is it lifted Karen to her feet, and it says a rivulet of fresh blood trickled down her right leg. What, happened, what, what it did was this spirit, this spirit, okay, this spirit claimed control over the menstrual cycle. Now, let's look at this because this is another area, too, that can be really tormenting and painful and uncomfortable uh, uh, for women, right? The demon mocks. See if you can stop that, preacher boy. Look at that. See, I've heard that before. Demons say that. Hey there, preacher boy, right? 
See if you can stop that, preacher boy. And so what happened is, it, it's a, it's it, the fact is, uh, she had she had just had her period only seven days ago. And so now the spirit was saying, okay, seven days ago, here we go again. This rapidly rapidly cycling menstrual cycle. It's like, wait a minute, I just got I just had my period a week ago. I just had my period two weeks ago. Or on the other side, where we get this where women go for months and months and months and months uh, without their period. And people go, Well, there could be a lot of hormonal and chemical reasons for that. You know what? It's a demon. Pray against it. Ask God for revelation on that, right? Okay. The demon says, I'm making her start another one. Prove your power, preacher boy. Prove it by drying, up her, uh, by drying her up. Right? You can't do it, can you? Right? Now, this demon was, goes on, right? And it's right here in the book. It keeps using all, all their potty words and their potty language, right? Everything else like that. It, it's shock, 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 shock. You know what? If you need to get over that shock, you may need to walk around behind the barn and say those words out loud a few times so that when the demons say it, say, you know what, demons, that's just filth. That doesn't work on me at all. Get out of here. Let's go forward, okay? And so what happened is the workers trying to get over the shock, they're like, okay, right? Uh, the, you know, the workers were whatever, and so they were praying, right? And all of a sudden it came back to uh, Rogers, the, the, what happened in Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. And that was where the woman had the issue of blood for 12 years, okay? And Jesus healed her, and they rebuked that. Uh, imagine, you know what? I bet you Jesus rebuked that spirit, and you know what? And it says that the issue of blood dried up instantly. And what happened was, is Pastor Roger goes, okay. And so he says, you know what? Did you come out of this child now in Jesus' name, just, just like Jesus did in, in Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 and 22. In Jesus' name, stop the bleeding. And you know what? The bleeding stopped instantly. Okay? These spirits know. Some of these spirits have already been pushed around or cast out by Christ or the d disciples. They know that. By the way, they have to, they, they're bound to your authority. Right? And I want to talk again about this mockery and what we say in German, this Freckheit, you know, this cheekiness, they would say, over, in the, over on the aisles, right? This cheekiness. You know, if we go to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20, you see this spirit, too. And, you know, what happens is, and where, where this demon will eventually start coming after the Catholic priest, is that he could do all his rituals, he could do all his things, but he had never really read his Bible. Okay? And that's what got, that's what gets a lot of people, is, is we're going to get a lot of our uh, discernment right from the Bible, right from the Word of God. Right? And so, praise the Lord, and this spirit, it was a big, it, it was a big spirit too, right? Oh, sorry, Proverbs 30, verse 20 says, says, she eats, and she wipes her mouth, and she says, I have, I, I have done no wickedness. That's the spirit of the adulterous woman. Okay? So anyway, okay, here we go. Now, what happened is this was another time, too. And remember, this was way back when and these people were praying in Jesus' name. We see that there, there was a word of wisdom, right, word of knowledge given here about the Bible verse, right? And so they kept, you know, they kept using Bible verses. People, you can use your Bibles when you pray. Okay, you can use your Bibles when you pray. Okay, and what happened? There was another instance. There was another instance here where the Holy Spirit had to come down, and the workers prayed for strength. Right? You know, and Jesus saw that too. These people were kind of getting shocked. They were not really prepared for this. You know, when when, when there's only one person suddenly out of ten that can do anything, right? And so they started praying, and they started praying in tongues. That's a powerful thing. When you do not know what to pray and you don't know what to do, sit there and pray for tongues and let the Holy Spirit take over. Okay? Praise the Lord. Okay? That in the name of Jesus. And they did that. And you know what? And a lot with this Mariana, too. There were some other things, too. We went over, we went over the, the menstrual problems. Right? Uh, too fast of a period. Too slow of a period. Um, painful periods. For some people, uh, the PMS and, I, and the time during the period is very debilitating, very painful, very tormenting. Okay? And so come against spirits of, of just, just lust, adultery, 
sickness, uncleanness, just, just come against all that. Come against the, we've prayed against just difficult period. A difficult period. This is horrible. This goes into fertility problems where people can't have kids, and then the demons will flip it on the other side. Oh, yeah, the demons get it. Yeah, and then they'll have 13 kids. They have churches over here in Europe, right? And I've, I've actually uh, been to these churches here, too. One man showed me a church, and he goes, well, this is the church, and it was a, a form. It was a form and color of Catholicism where uh, he told me, he says, well, uh, to be to show that you're blessed by God, you have to have kids at this church, and the smallest family in the church had eight kids. Right. Okay. There are some people. There are truly some people where their husband looks at them and they get pregnant. Right. And it's like they have all these kids. They don't know what to do with them or feed them or whatever else like that. Okay. So it can go both directions, and that's where you can notice it's like wow, where it's way too way too many or or way too few. A lot of Christians. Yeah. By the way, that's prayed by witches, too. So we had that. But the men menstrual problems. Now, another thing here, too, is our patterns. You know, sometimes we'll pray against a spirit and we'll see improvement in other areas, too. One, some of the, some of the, some of the uh, things they, they mentioned about the Mariana spirit or the spirit of lust, adultery, and whoredoms, you see, it, it, it produces personality patterns, too. Here it is, like a consuming desire to attract attention, good or bad, right? Lacks the ability to achieve because of no self-esteem. Yeah, why? Because these spirits tear down your self-esteem and how you, you know, and how you think about you. Oh, you're ugly. Oh, you're just a da-da-da, right? You're just a woman. You're just a Stand by a moment, everybody. Brother Elvis, we cut out for about 30 seconds. Keep preaching here. Okay, you there, are back, okay. my friend. Shannon, are we Are we there? Your audio cut out for about 30 seconds. Are you on um, Ethernet or Wi-Fi today? I, I'm, I'm on the super cable everything. I'm on Jesus cable whatever. Right. You're, you're where you yes. need to be. We've just got some issues I'm, with Skype. That's all right. Keep on going. This is good today. Yeah, this is like it, it, typical. And Shan, I want to sh say this too. You know, I, I, that doesn't offend me or whatever else like that. The thing is this, is that, you know, you start preaching on topics like this. Yeah, communication problems start happening. So we bind that up in Jesus' name. Because a lot of time when we talk on stuff like this, we get a rarely and a barely. And to go back 30 seconds, I don't know what was heard. So I'm going to repeat this again personality patterns that go on with this that give these spirits away is a consuming desire to attract attention whether it's good attention or bad attention okay right lacks the ability to achieve because of no self-esteem right because they're always being torn down a hatred of self unworthiness okay you see you see uh, because at one time again remember remember people this is a hatred of women this is a hatred of women. These spirits want to travel down the family line, okay, because they hate women. They hate you. They hated your mother. They hated your grandmother, your great-grandmother, all the way down the line. Yeah, they set up your forefathers with problems that they never talked about, right? I'm sorry. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a lot of my forefathers lining up and going to church and getting free either. Okay? So anyway... Very strong insecurity, right? And the emotions are pushed way down. Okay? And the only emotions are frustration and anger. Frustration and anger. The angry woman. The angry man. Okay? Anything that approaches them is an, uh, is an accusation or an act of punishment. That includes any any proper correction, right? You know, they're 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 acting all impudent, as the Bible says, right? Their only emotions are frustration and anger. I mean, I mean, we know people like this, and if we are the people like this, you know what? Hey, repent, ask God to help, right? Because okay, another thing is a self. They're like a selfish child with a martyr with a martyr complex. I'm always suffering. It's like, I'm always suffering. I always do this stuff for the entire family. And, and people don't seem to notice 
all this stuff I'm doing here. You know, I, I, I one time we had a situation here too, and it was a very talented, very a uh, very talented woman, and she was great. She, you know, be perfect household, and oh, she could do all these perfect meals. And she would, she would basically work herself to death. And where her family would tell her too, they would say, "Hey, just relax. Hey, it's it's okay. You know, you're doing a great job, but you're you're going way overboard, right?" And they'd sit down, and everybody would just be amazed, and the meals were perfect and wonderful, and and you know exactly, and everybody just complimented her from the beginning of the meal to the ending of the meal, and then as soon as the meal got done, she would have this feeling, and she would say it, and she would feel all depressed. She would say, "Well, nobody appreciates what I do." Okay, yeah. And the thing is, is when you start following this back down the line, that's where you start finding these spirits of lust, adultery, whoredoms, hatred of women, right? Hatred of men. Okay. And you see, folks, this is, this is what's great about discernment and where the Holy Spirit takes you is you'll start seeing these patterns here, too. And it's like, okay, here we go. Let's start going down. And do you see the, the self-defense mechanism there? Anything that approaches them is an accusation or an act of punishment. Well, hey there, Mary Jane. Um, you know, did you ever consider getting deliverance on this area? H has this ever been a thing? Well, why would you call me that? How are you? Right? Don't be afraid of it. And you know what? People's need for deliverance has to get past their their pride, past their rejection. Okay. Let's keep going. We'll go on to the next one, right? But now notice that there's like this martyr. It's a selfish child with a martyr complex. And what that martyr complex is, and maybe you've heard this before, oh, I do everything for the family and nobody appreciates it. And that's even if the family, the neighbors, and everybody else is telling them what a great job, that would, job they did. It doesn't get past those walls. Okay? You know, that's going to happen a lot in a week here. That's going to happen a lot in a week here when we go into Thanksgiving. Right? We've seen this. We've seen this. We've seen this uh, uh, during... Uh, you know, we've seen this too. You know, Thanksgiving dinner comes up, people, they cook their thing, they make all the perfect desserts, depending on which part of the country you live in, right? They do all the great stuff, and it's like, well, nobody thanks me. You know, or, or, or watch for this pattern too, you know, next week, folks. You'll be like, wow, that was a great meal. Please let, let me help clean up. Let me do the dishes. You know, let me clear the table. Oh, no, that's okay. You go and relax, right? And then wait for it. It'll be a couple minutes later. Okay? Wow. Well, now, folks, now you know what to bind and you know what's driving people. So, but please do it after the pie is served. Okay. Now, so praise the Lord. We just listed all that, you know, all these little underlying things that are here that lead back to the, to the big demon. Now, so they end up, and guess what? Mariana, for as, as tough as she, as tough as she wanted to call her, uh, call herself she was cast out too in Jesus name but then something happened they took a little uh, they took a little little break okay and then a dear friend of Mariana rose up you see demons a lot of times just don't travel by themselves they travel in what we call a wolf pack and I tell you what we here in Germany we know what a wolf pack is up in northwestern United States in Montana they know what a wolf pack is they travel in packs and what happened was, is they cast out this spirit that called itself Mariana, right? Okay? And her little friend, her big friend, manifested. And so they come back and they start, and, and they started uh, praying again, thinking, okay, well, let's see what we, what we run in here too, right? Okay? And the thing is, is that this other spirit came, came, came up too at the spirit, uh, same time, and it was a spirit of lust, lustfulness, Almost like the same spirit here uh, from Mariana, you know, that was lust, adultery, and whoredoms. This was a spirit of lustfulness, right? And so all of a sudden, it was a very low, very low, very, wow, like a really a demonic voice coming out of this little kid again, right? And it's just, you know, and the demon goes, you know what? I just thought I would like to inform you. You know, since you're asking all the other demons who they are, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you who I am. You're just going to ask me, my, my name is Genie, a spirit of lustfulness. Okay? Now, again, it's just a spirit giving itself a name, right? All the genies out there doesn't mean you're this, right? But it says, I, I am Genie, a spirit of lustfulness. And I might add for the record, 
I am a dear friend of that demon Mariana. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was a massive, another massive spirit traveling together in a pack of hatred of women and hatred of men. But now notice, this one was like another, a, a deeper layer of the, uh, of the onion. If you think Mariana was bad, oh yeah. Her dear friend, her dear friend Jeannie was even worse. Okay. Now the thing is, is here's deliverance. And when you start having experience... In deliverance, and when you start praying against these, you may bump in. You may bump into spirits and people, or similar spirits with names or whatever it is. But this Pastor Rogers, genie he remembered had used a variety of other names in the past. Goddess of this world, people, you can write this down and call these out too. Goddess of this world, the Great Red Dragoness, Queen of Evil, Princess Sataniza, the Luster. Uh, Madam Orgy, Juliana, Jeannie, uh, Jeannie the Wench, etc. Right? They always got it. It says the names often change, but the evil entity remained the same. Okay, so now it was just calling itself Jeannie, right? But they they flip names. That's why I'm telling you people, if this spirit would have called it uh, called itself by the name of Bob, Bob, you don't have to change your name. It's just a demon talking. Okay, and so what happened was. They asked him, it says, well, if you despise women so strong, then why do you dwell in this girl? You know, this is a good question, listeners. Okay, if these spirits hate women so bad, why are they inside of women? Right? And so they're sitting there. They're sitting there. And the spirit responded, too, because, you know, demons are proud. They said, well, you know, it, it says, I'm in women so I can go after men. I've had lots of men. I've been around for a long, long time, right? Now, you see this here too? You have this spirit who hates women, but it goes after men so they can destroy the men. And then you know what they do? They get the men and the women attacking each other, okay? Now, the ears of the married or ears of people, you know, if you've got a real hatred or despising of men, okay, you can come against this spirit here, right? If you have a real hatred and despising of women, you can come against this spirit here in Jesus' name and get that cast out. You know, why? Because what happens is, is that people loaded with these spirits, you know, then the demons bring them together, you know, they marry each other, or people bring their spiritual packages into a marriage. And in, in the case of Karen Kingston and her parents, yeah, then you've got the mother with her whole package stabbing the father to death. If you've just finished part one, go to part two for more understanding on this topic and deliverance prayer. Thanks for listening. Hit the like button. Subscribe to us for the newest broadcast that we have. You can support us at paypal.com under the email address elvishcd at aol.com. I'm live at omegamanradio.com every Thursday at 9 a.m. Central European Time. We hope to see you next time.